Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to talk about how Bernard Arnault ended up owning the entire fashion industry. Bernard Arnault is a French businessman who is now the richest person in Europe. He made his fortune by taking control of some of the world's most prestigious luxury brands. But how did he do it? Bernard Arnault was born on March 5, 1949, in Raubai, France. His father owned a construction company, and Bernard grew up in a wealthy family. He showed an early interest in business and attended the École Polytechnique, one of France's most prestigious engineering schools. After completing his studies, Arnold worked for his father's construction company. However, he soon realized that he was more interested in the world of business and finance than construction. In 1971, at the age of 22, he convinced his father to invest in a real estate development company called Farinal, which Bernard became the CEO of. Arnold's business acumen became evident early on as he quickly turned Farinal into a profitable enterprise. He then set his sights on the world of finance and worked for a few years as a stockbroker. In 1984, Arnold made his first major business move by acquiring a textile company called Busa, which was in financial trouble at the time. Busa owned several fashion brands, including Christian Dior, and Arnold saw an opportunity to turn the company around. Arnold's strategy was to revamp the company's operations and focus on luxury goods. He appointed a young designer named John Galliano to head Dior's design team, and the brand quickly regained its status as one of the world's leading fashion houses. Bernard Arnold's big break in the fashion industry came in 1984 when he acquired a bankrupt textile company called Busuk. Busuk was a French textile company that owned several fashion brands, including Christian Dior. Arnold saw an opportunity to acquire the company at a bargain price and use his business skills to turn it around. He convinced the French government to provide financial assistance to help him acquire Busuk, and he became the company's CEO. Once he took control of Busuk, Arnold quickly set about implementing his vision for the company. He recognized the potential of the fashion brands owned by Busuk, including Christian Dior, and he saw an opportunity to turn them into profitable luxury brands. Arnold's first major move was to hire a young designer named John Galliano to head the design team at Christian Dior. Galliano's bold and innovative designs quickly made waves in the fashion industry, and Christian Dior regained its status as one of the world's leading fashion houses. Arnold also recognized the importance of marketing and branding in the fashion industry. He invested heavily in advertising and promotion for his brands, and he made sure that they were associated with luxury and exclusivity. Bernard Arnold's big break was not just about acquiring a struggling textile company, it was about recognizing the potential of the fashion brands owned by the company and having the vision and business skills to turn them into profitable luxury brands. His success with Busuk was a testament to his ability to identify undervalued assets, implement a vision, and execute a strategy to turn them into successful businesses. Bernard Arnault's rise to power in the fashion industry is a story of ambition, strategic thinking, and business acumen. After acquiring the struggling textile company Busuk in 1984, Arnault quickly set about turning the company around. He recognized the potential of the fashion brands owned by Busuk, including Christian Dior, and he saw an opportunity to turn them into profitable luxury brands. Under Arnold's leadership, Busuk transformed from a struggling textile company into a successful fashion conglomerate. Arnold's success with Busuk and Christian Dior paved the way for him to acquire other struggling luxury brands and consolidate them under his holding company, LVMH. LVMH, which stands for Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, is now the largest luxury goods conglomerate in the world, with a portfolio of over 70 brands. LVMH's brands include Louis Vuitton, Dior, Givenchy, Fendi, Bulgari, and many others. Arnold's success with LVMH was not just about acquiring struggling luxury brands, it was about his ability to turn them around and make them profitable. He did this by investing in design, marketing, and branding, and by making sure that his brands were associated with luxury and exclusivity. 
Arnold's rise to power in the fashion industry was not without its challenges. In 1989, he faced a hostile takeover bid from the rival luxury goods conglomerate, Moet Hennessy. Arnold managed to fend off the takeover bid by acquiring a majority stake in Moet Hennessy and merging the company with LVMH. Arnold's rise to power was also marked by controversy. In 2001, he was involved in a legal battle with the French government over his decision to apply for Belgian citizenship. The French government accused Arnold of trying to avoid paying taxes, but Arnold denied the allegations and eventually withdrew his application for Belgian citizenship. Despite these challenges, Arnold's rise to power in the fashion industry has been nothing short of remarkable. He is now one of the richest people in the world, with a net worth of over $100 billion, and he is widely regarded as one of the most influential figures in the fashion industry. An interesting fact about Bernard Arnold is that he is the richest person in France and one of the richest people in the world. According to Forbes, his net worth is estimated to be around $170 billion as of May 2023, making him the second richest person in the world, just behind Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. Despite his immense wealth, Arnold has been known to lead a relatively private life and is often seen as a reserved and introverted individual. After consolidating his position in the fashion industry with LVMH, Arnold continued to acquire new brands and expand his portfolio. In 2011, LVMH acquired the Italian jewelry brand Bulgari, and in 2017, it acquired the French fashion house Christian Dior. Arnold's success in the fashion industry has not been limited to LVMH. He has also been a major investor in other fashion companies, including Hermes and Carrefour. In addition to his business ventures, Arnold has also been involved in philanthropy. In 2006, he and his family pledged to donate 200 million euros to the Institut Curie, a cancer research center in Paris. The donation was the largest ever made by a private individual to a single charity in France. Arnold's journey in the fashion industry has not been without controversy, however. In 2019, he faced criticism over his response to the fire that destroyed the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Arnold pledged 200 million euros to help rebuild the cathedral, but some critics accused him of using the donation as a publicity stunt. Despite the controversies, Bernard Arnold's journey in the fashion industry has been one of remarkable success and achievement. He has transformed the fashion industry and created a portfolio of luxury brands that are synonymous with style, luxury, and exclusivity. One aspect of Bernard Arnault's ambition and struggle that is worth noting is his focus on innovation and his willingness to take risks. Throughout his career, Arnault has been known to invest heavily in technology and new product development, even if it means taking on significant financial risk. For example, when he acquired LVMH in 1987, he invested heavily in research and development, including the creation of a state-of-the-art research center dedicated to product innovation and design. Similarly, he has been a driving force behind the integration of digital technology into the fashion industry, recognizing the importance of e-commerce and social media in reaching consumers. Arnold's willingness to take risks has not always paid off. However, in the late 1990s, he invested heavily in the internet startup, Boo.com, which ultimately failed, resulting in significant financial losses for LVMH. Despite setbacks like this, Arnold has remained committed to innovation and has continued to invest in new technologies and products, demonstrating his unwavering ambition and determination to stay ahead of the curve in the fashion industry. One interesting fact about Bernard Arnold is that he is a trained pianist and has performed at several events. In fact, he once played Chopin's Nocturne in C-sharp minor at a charity concert in New York City in 2006. Additionally, Arnold is a lover of contemporary art and is the founder of the Foundation Louis Vuitton, a museum in Paris dedicated to contemporary art. The museum houses some of Arnold's personal art collection and hosts exhibitions by some of the most renowned contemporary artists in the world. 
In conclusion, Bernard Arnault's journey in the fashion industry has been marked by his ability to identify undervalued assets, turn them into successful luxury brands, and build a fashion empire that is now the largest in the world. Arnold's strategic thinking, business acumen, and his keen eye for fashion and design have helped him acquire and transform some of the most iconic luxury brands in the world. Despite facing challenges and controversies along the way, Arnold's success in the fashion industry is a testament to his unwavering commitment to excellence and his vision to create an exclusive and luxurious experience for consumers. Today, Arnold is regarded as one of the most influential figures in the fashion industry and his legacy is sure to endure for many years to come. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more inspiring stories like this one.